I don't think. I just don't know if we're in a point in life and in civilization, yeah, where we will ever come to an agreement on stuff. You know that. I don't know, but I think on, on the on, on the overarching thing, I think we're always work, moving forward. So it's like, it always feels like conflict. But then you look back. So if you look at like the seventies or the eighties, they were ha still having the same kind of. Seventies is a good example where it's like it's very similar to now, like in terms of like the economic conditions and stuff like that. But it's like you look at how the seventies was. People would just people would just say nigger like it was calm or whatever. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. society has moved forward. But it feels like we're fighting the same, like, you know, like when when like um, I listened to the one of the ones you uh, one of the posts you did about uh, Black Lives Matter mm -hmm. recently, and um, so my, for my parents, say I'm telling them about what was going on in 2020, and they're just like, we've been through mm. that two, two, three times already, like nothing's gonna change, kind of thing, but. It, nothing, nothing changes in a moment. Or it doesn't. For everyone's gone back, all the corporations gone back. But you look at the, there are things that change. So I do think we move forward. We're always at war, but these it's like incremental changes over time. I think that mm. that, that happen like 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 little things. Like so, for instance, like in the seventies, I, I was I, I mean this is pandemic in it. Like I watched a like a, a documentary about the seventies and like women couldn't take out loans without their husband mm, yeah. signing off yeah, and stuff like, or credit cards and stuff like that. So it's like, that's m mad to us that a woman couldn't even have her own bank account really. Yeah, yeah. But well, a woman can own, well, obviously now a woman could have her own home. My great grandmother, she's still alive. I mentioned this before. She's 104 years old. Wow. She was never able to, she doesn't own her own home because when she came here, she wasn't able to do that and she wasn't yeah. married. Okay. So, she was never able to have a mortgage. Wow. Do you get so what I'm saying? Was, and then imagine like at the time now where she could probably get a mortgage, she's like in her 50s or 60s and mortgage companies ain't really trying to give you a 20 year something. Oh, because it's so a harder mortgage. It's a hard, exactly. Because yeah, yeah. you don't, they don't even know whether you're even going to be alive, whether you're even going to be able to work, mm -hmm. like what your faculties are going to be like and whatnot. Yeah, like I think in, in regards to like, maybe in regards to like how we deal with each other elements of it has moved on a bit um and we're there's more conversations being had so like there's certain things that have gone that are like covert and then there's other things that are over yeah. so like conversations we're overtly having conversations yeah and we're talking about stuff and but i think people's ignorance of being covert so it's still there but it's kind of under the thing and it's yeah. more done with undertones and whatnot and i would probably say that I know that some people would probably say it's better to just know that if these are your opinions, this is just how you are. But I don't know about that. I have to really think about that. I just think that it's like, it's good that we're able to have these types of conversations. But I think when it comes to the point of, you know what, like a decision that needs to be made, there's a decision that needs to be made now in regards to the better of the betterment of the people. Not everyone, because you're not gonna be able to please everyone, but let's just say 70%. Let's just say if we could just get 70% on board, yeah? The 30% matter, but the majority rules, yeah? If we could just get 70%, I just don't know if we can, we can do that right now. I just don't know, bro. I don't know, man, I, I feel like- Am I, I being a pessimist? But I think it's good. I think it's good. I'm, you know, I've been told I'm an, uh, I'm a annoyingly optimistic. <laughs> so right. it's good to have a balance of, of of approaches. I think, but I don't know. I feel like most people, like when you sit down in a room with a person, doesn't matter what culture they're from or what part of the country they're from, economic background or whatever, you can kind of get on a level with them. But I feel like so. I think we can hit that seventy percent. I think like one of the problems that I think is. I mean, in this country, it's definitely our print media. Print media, go on, yeah, elaborate I think, on that. I think the Daily Mail, the Express, just like that, that for, for that, because we, we consume our stuff through like, I mean, this is media right now, mm -hmm. so, but but um, <clears throat> there's still that generation of people that goes pick up the newspaper in the in the supermarket or whatever. And like, I mean, I don't read that stuff, but I look, I always look at the front covers and I'm just like, what? Like it just feels like it's a different. And you, you know, you do know that those people, yeah, that still buy those newspapers are like, they are 
like prominent voters. Yeah, they all vote. They so got they, the time. They all vote. So that's so they all they that's the... that's why like sometimes a lot of things go against us because mm. even though yeah we're it's an aging society, like they're all voting. Yeah, yeah. They're invested. And 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 they've got like a really kind of like strong idea of what they think the country should be or whatever. But it's like they're not always that clued up. They're not that tapped in really. Do you, you know? think that we know the direction of which, do you think that we could all universally agree on where the country should be? I think that the, I mean, it's, it's our, our idea of what Britain is, is totally, even like, it's, do you know what's funny? Like, we'll, I, I don't think of myself as English, say, yeah, but I'll, if I'm like abroad, I'll say I'm from the UK or from, you know, because. What's your heritage? My, my parents are Caribbean, so I'm Jamaican and St. Lucian. Right. Well, well, how about you? Jamaican. Okay, cool, yeah. So I would see myself as black British, mm -hmm. but not Same. as, I don't really associate myself as English. Do you know what I mean? The English flag doesn't really, I don't know. But then if you speak to, it's funny, if you speak to a Welsh person or a Scottish person, they're the other way. And they're, they don't, like a young person, they might, no, no, say if they were white, say, they might more heavily identify with being Scottish and be like, no, nah, bun UK, we want to separate. Yeah. So I think that there's so loads of different strains of identity happening in this country at the, at the moment. And I think, I guess there always will be, but we kind of have to, like, yeah, that's where you, what you're saying about that 70% is hard to get to. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think you're right, actually. There, I feel like there is a, I think there's a slight identity crisis in within this country. And the reason why I say that is because, yes, there will be a large group of people who feel like the this country is theirs and they know what this country looks like or whatnot. But the reason why I say that there's an identity crisis there is because there's a large demographic of people who are in denial about who is actually from here. So uh, to, to speak directly, um, let's just say like uh, Richie Sunak, Mm. You see, as soon as he become prime minister, yeah. the first thing people were saying was, "Well, oh, he's not fucking from here. <laughs> what the fuck? He can't represent me. He can't fuck. <laughs> so that straight away, it's like you, if you have a certain color of skin, even though his parents or his grandparents or whoever it is was born somewhere else, but he was born here, yeah. grew up here and was in, you know, in the mix of things. I don't know if he was in the mix of things, but let's just say he was. Yeah. Like you're... To them, you will never be seen as part of what is here. I haven't really seen people say it like those kind oh, of Oh, you people. listen to LBC. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Are they really going in oh, on him? Oh, listen, James O'Brien is my don and I want to have him on the couch. But but that's so funny though, because actually that would be a good conversation. Yeah, yeah you two I, I definitely down. want to have sit down with James But O'Brien. that's so funny because it's like, what we're looking at now is a, a post-Brexit Britain. So everything that happened that these men wanted is what's happening now. So you made your bed, didn't it? It's like, now True. you've got a brown man running the country. That's, you know, at the end of the day, he was a Brexiteer and you, you know, like it's the Conservative Party. That's what you yeah, man wanted. So Boris did a Boris. Yeah, he did his And thing. here we are. Enough gallon Boris, Boris, did, Boris did Brexit so he could get into number 10. Yeah. He did his thing. Liz Trust, well, she didn't even do a thing. She just, no, no, she was just there a couple of months. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then now we got this. So it's just like, what, you know, this is what you, this is what you wanted. But even elaborating more on the identity crisis thing, just a bit, yeah. I think also the identity crisis is on the other side too. And what I mean by that is, I think that you have a generation of people who are, let's say, third or fourth generation here. Okay. Yeah, and are in denial that they are from here, even though their heritage is somewhere else. So you can you can embrace that your heritage is here, but the the thought of saying, I like, I'm just not really from here, but wait, not only was you born here, but your mum was born here, and your dad was born here, mm, mm, and mm, your mm. grandparents was born here. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's like, so you're like third generation. Big man, you're kind of, <laughs> even though it's not your country, yeah, yeah, you're yeah. from here. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. You see, like when I go to America, for example, yeah, like my parents, Jamaican and whatnot, but see like America in particular, and I was just talking to someone about this just the other day, yeah. I've always had this thing where 
I know that this country has got its problems and I know also that this isn't the country that I would, I feel like I would want to be in for the rest of my life. Mm. I feel like I would love to go and spend a part of my time in Jamaica and whatnot when I'm retired and just do a bit of both because I feel like I'll still have my family here and whatnot, yeah. But I've always had this thing where I was proud of the culture that we, elements of the culture that we created mm. in this country, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And so whenever I traveled somewhere else, I always carried that with me. Yeah, I'd And say. I did that even with in the way that I dressed. Yeah. So you know what? If I went to America, like I'm not wearing Sean John or I'm not doing, even though Louis Vuitton and that's not from there, I'm not doing the Louis stuff and this, that and the fourth. When I go there, I'm just probably just might wear my trap starting, yeah, my yeah, Benjart yeah, yeah, thing, yeah. whatever it is. Or, or if I'm just dressing casually, then it will just be a young Zara or whatever it may be, yeah? Yeah. But like if I'm wearing a name or a brand that has a name on it, it's for me, if I'm going into a certain space, especially if I'm taking a picture, I'm wearing one of the man yeah, yeah. And that for me gives me a sense of pride. So when someone comes to me and says, oh yeah, where are you from? I'm like, yeah, I'm from London, isn't it? But yeah. I represent a certain type of thing and I'm happy and proud to be able to do that. But I think ultimately a lot of people are like, oh, no, 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 I'm not from here. But your when you look at your lineage though, like the last three generations, let's say, has been from here. And you would probably find that when you go home, even though, even though you will be embraced a certain way, when shit hits the fan, they will be very quick to remind you that you're not from here, you know? But I think then you, you're caught in the middle, aren't you? Right. I, I feel like anybody, I mean, I'm second generation, so, but I do feel, it's like, it's an easy thing to say you're from London. You say, a man's from London. It's like, that's, know, a, that's know, a different kind of badge to be in like, I'm but you English. say I'm British. I'm like English. I'm you know, it's, like a di it's, a di it's, a di it's a different thing, innit? That. You know, but but I think that um, if for someone who is fourth generation and they don't feel like they're British or they don't feel like they're English, whose fault is that? Is that their fault? No. Is that the fault of the, the environment that, that is hostile to them that they feel like they have to, you know? Because, you know, yeah, if, when I go to Jamaica, they can tell I'm not. Can I pause you just for yeah. a second? Um, if you just look here, yeah, he's, because he sat forward, he's like okay. quite at the end of the thing. So that's all right. If that's your comfortable place, we'll just- I'm kind of coming in between. So I'm just, so yeah, I, just should I stay? Just go, come this way. Yeah. Just so that you're not like at the end of the screen, basically. Yeah, yeah. Hold your thought, yeah. So is it better that I hold here now? No, you're good now. You're good, you're good, you're good. Yeah, good, yeah. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, go on, sorry, my bro. So yeah, you said even though you're from Jamaica or your parents were from Jamaica or, or you go. No, to but Jamaica. you know, but when I go when I go to Jamaica, then they know that I'm they, they know that I'm not from there. Yeah, there's you're from country. So it's like they say you're from country. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like it's like you you, you know you're cool, but I, I think I think there's a beauty in that, and I, I I think that my whole life, I've walked in between different worlds and I think that's actually as I've gotten older I've realised it's a, it's a big strength hmm. to be like the translator right you know? I hear that yeah and has anyone ever mixed you for being mixed race as well like oh yeah, well, your mother's white or <laughs> nah my only f certain girls try to say it but they always just try it's because oh, I'm he's light a lighty, oh, he's light, a lighty it's, it's, I mean I'm... you got bare panani from that innit bare <laughs> panan bread I got bare panan bread from nah, being bro. fake lighty nah. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah, but back That's in the day, country. but like it was just nobody a, cancel me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> joke. Nah, that stuff was silly, man. Yeah. But I don't have my features are black. I got black features. Yeah. I don't have, yeah. and I'm a hundred percent. As you know, what I did my DNA test, and do you know what's funny? Because my uncle did his first, but on my solution, so my uncle came up like quarter cool Irish. Okay, so I'm like thirteen percent. So I do have a little bit of something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but um, but yeah. You been alright though. What Me, you been doing, what you been doing? I'm yourself? good, brother. I just come off tour, bro. Right. This is. I think this is the first thing I've done since I just. I just slept all last week, man. I was knackered, bro. Is man. it? How I many dates did you do? And where did you go? Um, I did like seven dates, just, nice. just UK. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah it was How was nice. It? it was my favorite tour, man. By far. Sick. By far, my favorite tour, man. There's something different about the audiences this time versus before. Like I'm still trying to put my finger on it, but it was something. There was more of a like. I think something, it's something to do with the new music. It's something to do with me being more confident. You being more confident? Yeah, definitely. Elaborate on that. Definitely. I was more in tune with the music, but I think it's also maybe a post COVID thing, but it was a more of a spiritual energy. In, I definitely felt with the performances, there was a, 
it's like it's not just me doing songs that people know and them singing along there's actually like an exchange happening here there's like a catharsis of we're all letting something out in the room that wasn't there before before when I did because I've done a couple of tours before off my first album but they were more like yeah people were there they loved the music they're singing along but there was something more human I can't I'm still putting my I think if you ask me in six months I'll know exactly what it was but it was definitely there's something more spiritual there that wasn't there before right 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 the the, the um the part that interests me is the confidence element mm. um feeling more confident so did you have a loss of confidence or is the, did the confidence just strengthen and if the confidence strengthened how do you strengthen your confidence i think from just doing the doing the thing that you that you you're doing so it's like i'll, I'll go on stage the first time i think you see that with a lot of like especially um a lot of artists that might have a, a tune or two that blow up online mm. and then they haven't re performed before they go out there and the performance is not really saying anything, but they might just come with some bluster and cover it up, but they're still not necessarily confident yet, I don't think. Mm. Uh, there's a few artists, I won't name any names, but there's a few artists I've seen that, that I love their music, and then the first time I've seen them, kind of trash, and then it's kind of gotten better over time, and then you see them at award shows, and da, 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 and then like, oh, like yeah, like I can see the, the level. So it's, I guess, start somewhere um, with it, but um, I guess, uh, it's, it, it, I think for me, I've I've, ha I've I've been involved in different musical projects, but I guess my solo thing, at first stepping out as myself, it was like, it's a bit daunting. Whereas now I feel a lot more just like comfortable in my skin, in my ability as, a, as an artist, as a writer, as a performer. Do you know what I'm saying? Like I'm a bit more, I'm just, on a on a on a on a solid ground with it now, and I, and and for me now, it's where can I take it? It's like let's let's fucking go. Whereas before, it was like you know, like kind of uh, I'm in I'm in the room. Should I be in the room? Mm. Are these lot gonna let me in the room? Do you know what I'm saying? So when I'm, you say I'm these different... lot, are you talking about like a certain section of our media? Not really, because I, I, I feel like I actually function kind of outside of a lot of that stuff, actually. Yeah. I mean, I don't... I feel like my my ear is very wide, so I'm very yeah. aware of what people For are sure, doing yeah. outside yeah, yeah. of the, the noise. But also, I guess I'm in the noise. I go to the noise. I see the noise sometimes. I, I always feel like sometimes I don't fit well in it, which is weird. You know, I go to places and that, and I know people and whatever else, but I'm like, I just don't... I don't know. I just... I f my behavior doesn't feel awkward, but inside I do. I just yeah, feel like yeah, I don't yeah. know what if I'm why am I here kind of thing a little bit. But you know, I when I go to those places, I know who I'm seeing, who I'm not seeing too, yeah. and who's invited and who's not invited yeah, and yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah. that. And sometimes, like you know, I go for, I go for a long period of time without seeing you. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, okay. I I look at that and I'm like, yeah. There's probably a section of what goes on that doesn't really look at you or talk yeah. to you or like invite you to things yeah. or be, be in spaces and stuff like that. Like talk on that. Do you, how do you feel about that? But that that's like, a, like, like that's why I'm saying I've got into this place where it kind of feels like a superpower. So do you know who inspires me a lot is, and maybe musically it would maybe seem a bit strange to people, but, it's gigs. Okay. Because I remember, I mean, I've been a gigs fan from walking the part tape or whatever. It's like, but he was outside of it. Like, I remember like, no, the establishment weren't trying to let him be a part of what was going on. And also the sound that he was coming with, it was seen as like, like, it was a, it was a sound that was big on YouTube, but it almost felt like, these guys had a lot of views and plays and stuff, but they, they weren't artists. It was just like trappers or whatever. You know, I'm not speaking on anyone in particular, but you know, like it was kind of like, it was seen as kind of, I don't know. And he wasn't allowed to play in a lot of places and. Yeah, like gigs was definitely blackboard. Yeah. I mean, that's and, what, like an early level of blackboard. And, 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 and he, but he didn't, 
he just kept doing what he was doing. Mm. And now, I mean, if you think about when, when you were talking about galas or, you know, establishment, kind of black British excellence, when you think of someone, you think of gigs. Absolutely. You think of gigs in that, that suit that fits properly. Do you know what I mean? That, mm. And he, you know, you know, so, and I, you know, I've seen that, um, that Link Up TV uh, interview that he did where he's talking about even, this is from halfway through his journey, mm. I think just before Landlord, mm. and he's talking about he didn't have somewhere to stay. Mm. And he's, he had to see, he had to go to his cousins to like link his dog or whatever, or like they, his cousin would bring his dog to the studio or whatever. And um, I don't know, something about his journey, super inspiring because it's like he set a path now where like, see what he's done? All these kids that have come under him, it's amazing. Like, but oh, it's do you know what? You're so right. You know that that is a you've explained that in a very good way because I like what you've done there because essentially what Giggs has done, the door that he's opened up, mm. you are seeing the benefit of other rappers like really running with it now to yeah. bits. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, look at Rimsy, look at K Trap. Every- you get what I'm saying? Look at all of these man, like you know, pot of paper, like these lot are, and they're doing, and this is what a thing that I actually wanted to bring up as well. I mean, I look at a different side of it too. I, I'm very inspired by um, not only just them lot, but I'm also really inspired by like Loyal Karnam, man. I talk about him all the time. I'm like, this Don, like just is the epitome of, I'm going to put my head down and I'm just going to do my, forget the noise. I'm just doing what I like and what is true to me. And whoever, whoever, can connect with that, can connect with that. And the fan base that he's able to get from doing that is incredible. And we don't talk about it enough. He's and another like, example. Don did Alex, fam, he did Alexandra Palace. Do you know how much people that is? That's 10,000 yeah. people, bro. Yeah. He did that. He's, and do you know what? He just put out an album just recently. And before the album come out, he sold out Wembley Arena yeah. and is selling out Hammersmith Apollo. Like, that is, Wembley Arena is what? Give me like, what is that? Is that 20,000? That's like 20,000. And then what, an extra, let me just give them an extra five on top yeah. of that. And that that is somebody who is, again, away from the noise and another sex, another artist that like, I and mean, me don't really talk about too, too mm. much either. And that root super, in, that inspires me, bro. And I, I, I'll bump in, I'll just bump. 12 and a half. Oh, 12 and a half. Start the same thing. I bump into him in the street all the time. Yeah. Like, oh, he's happening, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Like, all the, and, and he might be walking his you or yeah. going to the gym. And it's just like normal. Like, it's not like there's no fanfare. It's just, mm. all right, yeah, you're doing. And it, he's, a, he's another example of like, and, and so for me, it's like, I guess, you know, what it is. It's like, and I don't know if it's always the most healthy way for me to deal with being. Uh, you know, not accepted or being an outsider, but it makes me push harder, I think. So for me, it's like, I can be, there's a bunch, and, and, and as I'm going around the country, I'm meeting a lot of these kids that like, like there's kids that are like 20 that grew up listening to my first album. And they're, I'm like, they're like weird kids from the area that don't fit in. And I'm like, their gigs, it's kind of weird. Like, uh, yeah, even with me saying, saying yeah, that, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, kind of strange. But kids that maybe are a bit left or a bit, and they're like, I see the way they're hugging their friends, playing playing when I'm performing certain songs, and but then they're making music now. And you're seeing them come through, and they're amazing. Yeah. So it's just like, for me, if I was like, if I was getting invited to everything and all that, I'd, I'd be cozy, I'd just be like, yeah, cool. Whereas because I'm kind of outside of it, it makes me push harder. Because I, yeah, I, I do. You see that you, what you're talking about the Addy Pallies and the and the Wembley. I believe I can get it. every time I, I put a, a show on in London. It's a bigger show. It's a bigger crowd. It's a bigger energy. Um, and so I believe that I can take it there. And I want to do it for all the kids that don't fit in. And and. I don't know, it's it's like, do you know what though? It's not even that they don't fit in. I think that there is a side in Britain, uh, compared to America, there is a side of the black experience, but also just the inner city experience that is not being communicated. 
Like it's not being communicated. We're we we're, 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 <laughs> we're getting there, but if you look at uh, you know Kanye, Drake, J Cole, Chance the Rapper, whoever you want to mention in that, Tyler, we we we're missing. I mean we we like Ken, Ken did I say Kendrick? Mm -hmm. Um, you know like I'm not and I'm not saying that we haven't had like conscious lyricists obviously like Wretch is like one of the greatest ever you know but what I'm saying is there's it's kind of like we've got like the street thing is now cemented it's it's there like no, no one can take that away from us and we've got the pop thing and actually a lot of the time that, that kind of blends over but I feel like the alternative thing like why is there not at the MOBOs why is there not a best pop car category or a best indie category like why I don't understand if where, I, where do you put where do you put Cat Burns at the MOBOs where does Cat Burns fit in Cat Burns is doing incredible phenomenal stuff where does she where does she where where would she fit in I mean, that, these are all conversations. Sorry to interrupt you, but I have to say this, and I'm going to say this so many times. I'm actually just going to just keep saying it all the time. And I think I've said it before. But you know what, yeah? I am starting to lightly just get just a tight, a slight bit irritated of when we just say black culture. And I have to be, I have to be, um, this has to go for me as well. Because when we talk about things and we use the statement black culture oh we need to do this for black culture all black culture this black culture that yeah what are we what are, what are you talking about like what ex and i asked that as a question like yeah, yeah. what are you actually talking about because there are so many different black experiences yeah that exist there's so many different black people that come from different areas black people that come from different areas black people that come from you know, their parents come from different places. Black people that are into, have different views on things, that are in, they have different interests, they have different political views. They are, you know, they come from different backgrounds, financially, uh, status, all of these type of things, yeah? There's so many different sides to it. To turn around and just blanket statement, oh, just, we need to just do this for black culture. It's like, who are you talking about? Because I think a lot of the time when people do that, you're talking about one side and then alienating this, yeah. that, and the fourth. We have to be a little bit more specific when we talk about that because it is, it can be alienating. And that's why when you start saying, you know, like about like not fitting in, like what is that? What is that? What is that? Like not fitting in. But I think it's not fitting in with an idea because I think like when, like, I think a lot of times- Well, you, we, this is the thing. You could feel like, when we're saying, when we're talking about, or when people say, oh, you know, like we need to do something for, like we need to talk about that. Like, oh yeah, we need to do something for this and black culture. People need to be better in the black culture at doing. Yeah, like you're just talking about one side that essentially the other side that are not doing that or don't feel that way, now feel like they don't fit into this idea of what black culture is supposed to be. But we're not, it's, we're not all the same. We're just not all the same. Yeah. I like, think a lot of the time there's a conflation where I feel like when people say black culture or the culture, they're really talking about street culture, which yeah. is a, which is a- uh, Say, let's say that then. And, and that's valid. Let's say that. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. Let's say that. I think that, but I think that's, va but I think that's valid. I think street culture, you know, you know, I'm from the same place that everybody else is from. Like I grew up in Leightonstone, Thatch House. Do you know what I'm saying? Like that, that's where I, I grew up. But it's like, there's, uh, yeah, I I th I, th I think you're right, but I think that I think that what happens is we are there's not a lot of us in Britain. It's not like America where there's like ten fifteen percent of the population. We're like three percent of the population, and so everything gets kind of you know like if you want to look at one extra, which has been obviously like really important over the last like twenty years or whatever, but like it's 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 been you know. And it's some really nice people, the people that I've met there, but it's been run by white people really for, for for the most part. That's what I've seen over the years. And that's fine, but it's like, that's just one. I, that's okay, changed now I, though. I feel like that's I'm, changed I'm, now though. Yeah, yeah, 400%. Yeah. But I feel like what I'm trying to say is, 
Say it, my brother. No, no. What? <laughs> say it, man. No, what I'm trying to what I'm trying to say is <laughs> is that the reason why black culture we, we we say the culture or black black culture or whatever, and we we're talking about street culture is because it's being digested mainly by like kind of like like white thirteen year olds really like you know like who think it's exciting you know like I think I think hip hop culture in general has really cornered something quite masterfully actually where like um like you know like in film or in like entertainment like violence is exciting isn't it it's like there's no getting around it if you watch a film and there's not like a car chase or a shootout you're just like what like do you know what i mean it's like unless it's like a rom-com or something but it's still a punch-up in the rom-com at some yeah. point right so it's like violence is is, is and conflict and stru struggle and those things and trauma is exciting and i feel like what's happened is black people in this country almost are like that's our stool in it we set out that stool and that's what we're selling the mainstream you know the and that's what i refuse to do right like there because there's so much more to say than that and I, i'm not knocking because i enjoy a lot of that music and i'm not knocking anybody that does that but I, what i do think is that sometimes kids they'll get behind the microphone and the first thing they're gonna do I dip man down. I took yeah. the big fucking because four, they five. Think, because they know it's going to work. Yo, my Don, this. I got the pack. <laughs> you but know they I mean? know it's going to work though. <laughs> when actually they <laughs> might be. <laughs> well, enough men say they got the pack and they don't even know what the fuck. They don't even know what they're talking about. But it, it, it works sounds though. Hard. It sounds exactly. hard though. Exactly. I'm not going to lie. And, and we'll the roast pack it. sounds mad. And the Yo, huh? And, and it's just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got my sh Bro, but I think the pack is like, yeah, I hit my man for the pack. I flipped the, you get what I'm saying? And if I had the, <laughs> you know, if I had the voice, if I had the voice. Oh, and the brizzy. Yeah. I got like the mix in the brizzy. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> Everyone whipped work. Hold on, wait, one second. I'm not saying that like, cause I K trapped them and they're dead thing certified now. But what I'm saying is, is that like, you're right. Like everyone comes out and everyone was whipping work. Everyone was in the kitchen whipping. Big man, not everyone knows how to whip. I know that. Sometimes people are just learning it from the bars, innit? Yeah, yeah. like, they're just saying it. Yeah, boom, man got the brizzy in the pack, like all of that and whip this and what. You didn't whip anything, bro. Like you didn't whip anything. A couple man, if anything, at the most, couple man might have sold a few scores. You yeah. get what I'm saying? Certain man might have just like, dibbled and dabbled. Man went crunch one weekend. <laughs> You get what I'm saying? It sounds fucking cool. It sounds hard. It sounds fucking cool. And I think that's the thing that I want to open up the option. Whereas like, you know, I guess like gigs almost opened up the option for a lot of guys that maybe didn't think they would have a, a career in music and they were just going to be street guys or whatever. He's opened up a, a lane for that. I want to open up a lane for kids that there's a lot of nice kids that didn't need to, sp to, to say certain things on records. Fam, there's a lot of man that came from these areas that just wasn't, a, and that's why I talk about black experience, bro. Like, some of us came from the same area and we all lived in the same environment, but our experiences was different. Like. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, some people, some people had the experience of like their addiction in their environment. They saw their family go through addiction or they've, you know, drug dealing has been a thing or, you know, there's been violence or there's just been like, you know, a lot of like gang activity or, you know, just a lot of like unfortunate um, situations that involve maybe violence or whatever it may be. But then there's also some people that came from that certain environment. And you know what? Both mums and dads was at home. They came from a good home and stuff like that. Their friends was cool. You know what I mean? They did. They may not have had a lot of money, but you know what I mean? They 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 had a circle of friends that just maybe was into gaming or just into fashion or whatever it was and they just they just stayed out of the mix you know on my estate you had the lot that was that would you see them out all the time here and they was always hanging on this bit and then there was also the people on the estate that like you almost forgot that they lived on the estate because they go out they just do their thing and you might just see them just come back but they might not have the name because of whatever yeah but yeah. that doesn't mean 
Like, so then, we, yeah, like when we talk about black more, culture yeah. and we say black, oh, we got to do this for, like, who are we talking about? But it's like a lot of the time, you lot are just talking about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you're just talking about that, but you're forgetting this, that, this, that, and that. Yeah. Everyone knows who the bad boys are in the area because they're the bad boys, but it's like there's actually less of them than <laughs> everyone else, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So like, the reality is that the majority of the time, the bad boys in the it's only a, in the greater scheme of it, there's only, what, maybe 5%, if that, really, that are bad boys. Yeah. And so why is that everything that we're talking about? And even if you, even if you go to a black wedding, say if you go, and a black black weddings are a perfect chance to kind of really get the all the different flavors of mu like musically, how much crud are you hearing at a black wedding? Like like bars, <laughs> like not that much. Like you might hear like That's power or changing, something. Though. Do you know what I mean? That's but it's changing now. You go to the you go to the wedding, too much mixing the brizzy. No, but you hit. No, but there'll be the moment for that. There'll be no moment for that. But it's not like a straight. What I'm trying to say is, it's not like a straight. No, I hear that still. You might, thing. yeah. Depends on the age you know. You might still hear all the Luther Vandross and all that. Yeah, stuff. but my, but my experience when you're talking about being in the area, I think, yeah, like, I was fortunate. I had both my parents in the house. We were like, money was super tight, and it was like they were trying to think down the line. My dad was kind of like the coach Carter in the area, like they used to bring him into, he was a, a supply teacher, they bring him in, he's like a six foot black man, they bring him into the school to put the kids in line, you know, that's right. that was more, you know. Slight undertone there. What do you mean? Tad undertone. Oh. Oh, we need the big black oh, yeah, giant but, guy. Yeah, yeah, but, <laughs> no, but real talk, I'm just no, saying it. <laughs> no, because all the teachers were just like no, white I mean, women I'm in their joking. 20s that they didn't know what no, to do that. with the, the, they, that's, that's the reality. I mean, that's, yeah. that's a problem in schooling, I think mm. that, that, you know, that, that, that's what my my dad was. That's they used to bring him in different schools and just come in and yeah and and, and so, but then he was and and he used to like tutor people like on you know a lot of the if you wanted to go to like like a lot of the black and Asian families in the area if you wanted to send your kid to a grammar school you sent them to my dad my dad would teach them how to do you know what I'm saying and um so but then. I, I had to deal with other things. Like I was going to school, my secondary school was out of the area. I'm dealing with, this is at the peak of like peelings. Oh, so, and man was teeth and phones. Yeah, right? bruv. So I'm coming like this, just, I'm still experiencing everything. Did you get the demand teeth your thing? I was, you know, I always looked older than I was. Right, so man. So people didn't really look at me like I was food, but <laughs> it was like. <laughs> 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 but 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 it was like you I was experiencing everything just on the buses and on on the roads but at the same time I'm coming out to Essex and they're like Dave this black person did this this and I'm having to like speak for my whole et, like my my race my area like it's ridiculous mm -hmm. like so it's like a different but I know I'm not the only person that that went through that and and and, yeah. and, and felt like that and I, and I come home and 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 um, you know, um, I come home and and, and people are like, oh you you know it's a bit of a long word, do you know what I mean or whatever? And it's like oh they say what you okay yeah and you hit and them with like I don't know like blasphemous and they're like yeah you yeah that? just any word like, like, where'd you learn that you know but but so it it, it but it, but it was a trolling they know what I'm saying it's just more like they're just taking the piss yeah yeah you yeah know? you're like um, oh bro that was diabolical my, my, man's my, like what dial what yeah 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 Rhea? what my cousins still do it to me now Does they just it? think it's funny <laughs> but it's like you know I got a, I got a lyric um on my first album where I sing and I say um all the uh, you know all the rude boys thought I was posh and all the pot shoots thought I was rude. And every show that I'd go to, I sing that. And there's so many people like singing that mm. with like, okay. yeah. So I'm thinking, hang on a minute. Why is that line resonating? Because a lot of people feel like that. It's almost like, I don't know. And so that's. Yeah, no, I hear that. Yeah, yeah. But, 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 but coming back round, I, I always have a convoluted No, 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 that's fine. We're podding. Yeah. <laughs> but but th that's why I feel bolder now. Okay, you know, because I know I know who I am and where I'm at and what I've, what yeah. my job is. That comes with time as well, yeah. man. Um, let me ask your opinion on this actually. Okay. This is another thing that I was going to feature a few times on a pod just to ask a few people's perspectives on this. Um, I'm not going to play the whole thing, but I'm going to play 
a little bit of it, so. Of seeing that a rapper from Migos died, I just wanted to go ahead and make a video about something I had a unique experience in. So I directed a bunch of rappers, people like Gucci Mane, Snoop Dogg, you know, uh, Lil Yachty, the list goes on and on and on, okay? I learned a lot of things, um, and I have left the industry um, largely over my political beliefs, but there is something I want to impart to people to hopefully, you know, make some sort of change happen. So I have a challenge to rappers, and I know some of you still follow me. I know a bunch of the celebrity blogs still follow me from trying to get news from music videos and things like that. So here's the truth. The truth is this. A bunch of young black male rappers keep dying. You know who's not dying? Record executives. The record executives that push for them to continue to make songs and create a culture that is obsessed with death, drugs, and sex. Period. The industry is obsessed with it, but those record executives, they're not dying because they don't push this culture on their own people. But they're encouraging you to push it on yours, and they're paying you handsomely to do it. The reality is I know a lot of you. A lot of you are good people. You're family guys. You're not the image that you put out there to the world. Why? Why don't you be the example? Stand up. I challenge you. Be the example. Make music about the culture you want to see. Don't just get online today and talk about how, you know, whenever a rapper makes it, his own people take him down. Don't just make those videos. Don't be sad. Don't rest in peace. None of that stuff. Be the change you want to see. Inspire it in your community. Reach out to other rappers and say, we have to stop. We're being used. You've been used for a long time, you know. They create this paradigm to make you believe that you're so important and your celebrity status is worth so much, but in truth, you're a pawn in their game and you always have been. The government has wanted to hold down communities of people in different ways through different methods for a very long time. I'm going to leave it there still. Because mm. I'm going to play this a few times on different pods and that. What's your What's your thoughts on that? I, I, I take it that that guy's white, right? Yes. Um, I feel like there's an element of what he's saying that is kind of simplistic, but there's an element of it, what what he's saying that I I agree with. But I feel like he's putting the onus on the artist when really. It's not just on the artist, is it? It's like, you know, they're, they're just doing what works. Uh, and, 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 I, and, and the other thing that I don't ag agree with what he's saying is he's saying that it's a reflection of... It, it's not about... For me, it's not about just... I, I, I don't really care... It, like, I, I, see, I see a lot of oh, it's setting a bad, it's a bad look, it's a bad image of black people. But to who? Like, I don't really care what white people think. Like, if they think we're, I can't. I've never been able to do anything about that. Like, if they if they think we're all animals, they think we're tugs. That's up to them. Like, I'm just gonna get on with my life. But I think where I do agree with him is that it's this selling. And this is why I do think that like these conversations, you know, like we were talking about before, like the conversation with Black Lives Matter and stuff. I think it is important because I think there's still this inherent thing of the black man being this kind of animalistic, like killer, this danger in society. And um, even like some of our most kind of like positive, you know, like I call them PBMs, you know, like, positive black males you know like that that they, they, they still are are able to sell violence trauma because the audience accepts it from them whereas actually if they were white the same human being but if they were white it wouldn't be people would be like get out of here with that gangster shit but if you're black you can do it and so i think that's where i do agree with him is that there's a selling of trauma danger and stuff that the black artist engages in but but the thing is is that is that on the, the really what needs to change is society why if 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 i say i went you know i live i grew up on the same street as tom hood school yeah 
if I had, I'm from Leytonstone, right? If I had gone to a different school, what I'm trying to what I'm trying to say is I could, instead of you know I'm a singer, but let's just say I I had a slightly my voice sounded slightly different, and I I just started. I could say a lot of stuff and people would eat it up because of the color of my skin mm. and that's ridiculous. Mm. So I think that really in order for in order for in order for it to change society needs to change like society needs to stop looking at black people as dangerous that's yeah, where it yeah. starts because it's like you can't it, it, it's like it's like you can be convinced of something by someone's skin yeah yeah that, definitely well black is danger yeah, you're yeah. supposed to be red you know uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's true though yeah. or yellow no well yellow is uh, isn't that a sound of amber so it's like you're getting close to danger but but or you're in between danger and a green light, basically a traffic light thing. Mm. But red is a sign of it's alert, mm. danger. But black is that though, really, well, to it's, a degree. It's all but, rooted back into. I started looking up at. I started looking up like the origins of, of the idea of race. Interesting. A and what I didn't realize. What did you find? What I didn't realize is that it's quite an. It's a lot newer than I thought. So I thought. You know, because traders would come across each other and stuff. And so, like, you know, if you were, like, you might have come, you know, if you were from here, you might have come across an African or an Asian, you know, on your travels if you were a trader or something. But really, the idea of race really begins at the same time, like, of, like, demarcation, begins at the same time as colonization. So what it's actually about is people that sell themselves as, as Christian but we want to exploit these people how can we exploit them oh they're not actually human mm. they're slightly they're like halfway animal and so it starts there that's that was the reason why there were you know slavery mm. colonization they excused it on a moral one because they were like these people are not and that's the, still the same thing that carries through today where it's like I can sell you some gangster shit because of, you think I'm tough. For no, I haven't proved it. You never see me knock no one out. I, do you know what I mean? Like I, I haven't done anything of any to prove that I'm bad, but mm. you will take it from me versus the white version of me. Mm. And so I think that like, really, if there's money to be made and there's success to be had, some black artists are gonna go down yeah. that road. Do you know what as well? The simplistic element of it is that like economically there's a massive problem he, well, he's talking about a pers an american perspective yeah so this guy is america well he, he lives in america anyway he, and that was coming off the back of takeoff being shot yeah. right um from migos and he the simplistic element is you know what if you don't rap about certain things then this is not gonna happen that's not true really because when you look at like the economical issues that they have over there uh, there's big problems there's um you know look let's look at their gun laws i know that they are what is it their first amendment or their second amendment or some shit like that it's one of their one of their first few amendments anyway the right to bear arms yeah, yeah, so yeah. that in itself is techie because mm you have so many straps on the street that are not even accounted for. No matter how they try to legalize it and do this, that and the fourth, the reality is, is that if I can get a strap, I can get you one. Do you get yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? I might legally be able to have one, but we can get them out on the roads and whatever. And you can see then, the difference. Then exactly. And then you oh, also yeah. look at the, the, the conditions that people are having to live in and stuff like that, which then is going to play a part in hunger and what people are striving for, especially when you look at the fact that you got some, in some places, some people are so poor, but some, some, some places, some people are so rich and you put things like, I'm just simplifying it now, ironically, but let's say a gun law where everyone's got straps in that and these lot are mad hungry. They're already living in trauma. 
yeah and then you've got someone else who has managed to acquire some type of wealth and whatever he's managed to find his way out the chances are you put yourself in a, in the the aim of danger and that's this is just what's going to happen that is bigger than just music you get what i'm saying I think that even if you do make certain type of music, this is what's going to happen. However, I understand, though, that some people's arguments will say, I hear all of that, but I don't hear much about R&B done dying or being shot and killed. I don't, you don't really hear about uh, someone who's singing reggae music, for example, yeah. being licked down and that. Like, why does it seem like all of these men not all of them, but a large percentage of them, or a decent percentage of them, are being licked down. What, what, what is that about? Well, you, you, obviously, you do make yourself a target if you're, whatever you're, whatever you're, you know. I, I, my my music's quite introspective and kind of like I'm talking about society and stuff. And so I'll sit down with someone and some people. Oh, I'll, I'll meet someone and people will feel immediately comfortable telling me something very vulnerable. Like uh, being, be, or they're, they're v immediately comfortable being vulnerable around me because I'm vulnerable in my music. Whereas I feel like, you know, from like rappers that I've spoken to that maybe, or people that I know that are on, on another side, their DMs are just full of man, like look at, look at what I'm shot in this weekend. Or do you know what I mean? It's like, you kind of, you, you, you create that, you bring an energy to you that, right. you, that you've put, right. put out there. Do you remember what Mitch said? Mitch said something that I thought was quite interesting when we was talking about manifestation. And we talked, I can't remember the exact angle of which we was coming in, but he was talking about like believing in manifestation and that. And I don't know how we got here, but he was saying, well, you know, you got to look at if, if you are in your music, for example, talking a lot about a certain type of thing. And I know that he wasn't, I don't, cause I don't wanna, I wanna say this carefully, cause I know that he wasn't saying that this is the reason why it's gonna happen, but he was just talking about creating an energy. You're, you can create an energy. And when you create that energy, you're almost living within that energy. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So if you are in your bars talking about, constantly talking about, I'm not saying these men are, just generally speaking, there's a lot of, yo, death, that, yo, flipping, I got my strap, I got this, that, and that, whatever. If we're talking about manifestation and you believe in manifestation, then I guess we can't be limited in where we go with manifestation. It can't just be, oh, I manifest, like, you know, I want to be successful, so I just manifest that. Like, we, if we're talking about manifestation, we're talking about a thought process and an energy and, you know, the things that you have around you and the people that you have around you and, you know, all of this type of stuff. So if a, a, a part of that is death and trauma, even if you are successful and you have these things around you, then ultimately you're living in an energy that could make it very risky and techy for you, which could lightly, lightly, maybe not, if you are like super in the manifestation element of it, you can use that as a slight element of like, well, sometimes these are living in trauma. This might be one of the reasons why you're hearing a lot of these lot getting licked down. Whereas why don't we see R&B singers getting licked down? Well, they're manifesting banana bread. <laughs> don't really, that's the reality. A lot of them ain't walking, talking about singing. They're not singing about licking a man down, really. A couple man might be. They're not, Jaheem did actually, and Jaheem yeah, got himself yeah. in a little thing, didn't he? <laughs> anyway, but like a couple singers might do, but the reality is that they're not really doing that. They're not really singing too much about selling drugs. Some of them do. I'm not saying they all, but some of them do. But a lot of the time they're singing about like love or gal or mm. relationships or whatnot. And where someone could probably break my argument down a little bit is that, well, how many of them are in successful relationships? That could be true. But I could also say that a lot of them are singing about failed relationships. And so <laughs> the reality is, yeah, the majority of them are in failed or shit relationships. So manifestation could likely be a part of this too. Uh, yeah. I like, know it sounds mad, but like there might be something in that. You've just made me think of something as well, which I think actually- I'm shout out to Mitch. He said that a lot better, but still. This is something that actually, 
connects up with what we were talking about before, right? And that's like with the R and B guys that you say they're talking about love making and relationships and blah blah blah. It's still for me, and they still come from the same environments. By the but way, but I feel like that's still for me. It's about virility, isn't it? It's about like there's still, and this is why I, I'm so intent on creating this other lane because it's like what. Like why why does why does a black man if he's expressing himself, it's either violence or it's sex? Can't right. I talk about how I feel? Can't I talk about my insecurities, my hopes, my dreams, my my problems, my ups and downs? Like the things that we all talk about. You know, like when you're with your boys, where you know that it, you know you're close and you can kind of open up. Why can we not talk about those things you on, can. on record? You can. And and that's, so, like, okay, with the R&B stuff, it's like, that's not um, attracting, uh, you're, you're not bringing killers to your door. But I, I still think that it's playing into the idea of black people as being animal. It's, it's like we're selling, in, in that case, you're selling sex. Yeah, yeah, that's you're not, true. You're not, you're not, you're not selling violence. You're selling sex. Whereas, like, when you think about, I don't know, like Harry Styles, like the 1975, like oh, I fuck you know, with 1975. Yeah, I love 1975. Like Arctic Monkeys, they don't feel like, oh, I've got to talk crud or ah, oh, I've got to talk about. But they, to be people. fair though, their man didn't. Did they live in that environment? But some of the guys that. We, like I know what's some the, of the difference guys, really I hear what you're saying because there's some people that didn't come from that environment that are still talking it is that what you're saying yeah and I, and I think I think like you know I just think there's, there's there's so much more of a range there and I'm this is not saying that they're like artistically better what I'm trying to say is like I feel like they've got more room to express themselves however they want and that's society that allows them to do that whereas with us it's like Oh, I need to get this music thing going. Am I gonna say this on the track? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And do you know like, what? Can I can I just say yeah. this though? I believe that, but I'm 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 slowly, I'm slowly changing that opinion. And the reason why I'm slowly changing that opinion, this is something I wanted to just bring up before I li I left here, was not. I know I'm talking about Loyal Kana again and what he's done, mm. but I'm gonna move it away from that. I recently went to Brixton Academy and I saw Koji Radical in Brixton Academy. And I thought, this is absolutely sensational. Mm. There was one point, like, I didn't think that in the beginning. I just went to the show and I was just enjoying the show and just watching him perform and that, yeah. I was standing next to a guy called Marvin Sparks, who's like a, you know, he's a deep music guy, yeah. Standing there and then I'm like, I said to him, brother, it's kind of mad, like, Man's in Brixton Academy watching Koji Radical. Mm. Like, you would never, you would never have thought, really, that an artist like that would do that. Like, when you, when I look at, I'm a fan of this thing, and I'm a fan of so many different elements of it. Yeah, but at one point, I was there when, like, Brixton Academy wasn't even a. You just no one didn't even do that. That was a American. Americans mm -hmm, did that. Mm -hmm. And then you know what? If anyone was gonna do it and did do it, it was tiny. Tiny blew up and he was having yeah. a moment and it was like, whoa, Tiny did Brixton Academy, bruv. That is flipping crazy. And then Tiny went on to do the O2 again. Oh my God, this is flipping mad. Like Tiny's doing that. Like you only saw Jay-Z and Kanye doing Watch the Throne there and this person doing that there and whatever. You never saw any of these guys, yeah? You never saw any of, you never saw any of the man them. And I say that as a blanket, yeah? That's changed now because then you're starting to see like a lot of the people that are within the noise, whether they're good or not, they're doing these venues and stuff. But Koji isn't a part of the noise. He's not a part of the noise. He is someone who has, again, built a fan, like, and I guess he's forced his way a little bit into an element of it. He will sit and tell you straight, like, I feel like an outsider. He's, yeah. you know, not a part of necessarily what is deemed as the whatever that is in it yeah but what he is doing is still breaking down an, another door for the people who that are not necessarily that and i just think if you can see somebody like him do that 
and you can also see Loyal Kana do this, and you can see a few other artists doing like uh, the Is Little No Twos or whatever it is. It's essentially show slowly showing you that no, wait, like you don't have to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can make a great living off doing this. I think Koji's a great example, and I think maybe he was someone that we overlooked in this conversation so mm. far, because um, I think he's had to make some adjustments. Yeah. I remember like when he first came out, he was very political. Yeah, yeah. I, I was like, I mean, I still am a fan, but like, I remember like when he first came out, I was like, raw, like, he, he, it was just like a, it was just like, you couldn't take your eyes away from it. It was like, so it was an intense energy and it was like, you know, and obviously he's, he's had his growth as an artist and, um, but I think, I think I, I agree with you a hundred percent. He's, he's, he, he doesn't have to like, he doesn't say anything. But I think I think what he's done, he's 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 quite cleverly managed to kind of, and I'm every, I mean a lot of us do feel like outsiders, but he's cleverly managed to kind of have one foot in right. that kind of mm. one extra gala mm. GRM gala world, mm -hmm. and one foot he's oh. a bit left, mm. and um, so I think he's a great example. Um, I mean in in rap, mm. you know, um, with what I'm doing, it's like. You know, I I, th I think you know when when it comes to, I mean I'm singing like you know, but I'm it's like sometimes I will get I got I got an award nomination the other day for a music video. It's like best R and B, but it's like I was happy about that because I I you're love R and B. I grew you're up. You're not R and B done. I know, but I grew up I grew up with that, so I was like I was happy. But it's like almost like there's no. That's why I feel like with Mobos or Rated, it would be nice to have a section that's best pop best indie or best alternative just a best alternative car category mm. you know so that we could yeah, have the you know me Hat Baker Connie Constance like we could we could actually this could be something there for us no, I I, in in the black award shows not right. not having to like because then you get other acts that have that what they do there's a few black acts that deliberately totally remove themselves from street culture like in its entirety the way they dress the the, the 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 interviews they do and i feel like but when you hang out with them they're just the same as us i don't want to name no names but i'm just i'm just saying like they're the same as us but they've done it in order to kind of like what like for their music to work in another world when i feel like I think Koji's a great example actually of someone who manages to tread all of those mm. worlds successfully actually. Because.